Ah, lovely, lovely amaryllis. Isn't she beautiful? And this is just one of many, many, many varieties that are available. We've been presenting information to regular viewers who would have been watching over the last year and a half. And in this video, what we're going to be looking at is how to treat your plants after they've all bloomed out. To ensure that these bulbs stay alive and also thrive, you are likely to have to either repot or take them outside and plant them in beds. And that is what we're going to be featuring in this video. So please keep watching. So I have five plants on the table here that were that have bloomed out. These were from my own personal collection. So you can see that this one still has its stake. Now I waited at least a month since the last bloom and now I'm satisfied that the, we're not gonna get any more blooms from this. So of these five, what I'm going to do is first unpot them. Oh, look at this one. Because this was double pot, so I guess for aesthetics, the roots started coming out. Oh, look at this guy. This is a six inch pot. They're all, and this, this one is an eight inch. But this is the size that they're sold in. So these would have been potted, I would think about four months in the pot. And definitely, if you wanted to keep these bulbs, and I would suggest that when you get a gift, a bulb as a gift, the whole idea is for you to keep it going for as long as they can. They can grow up to 20 years, you know, in, in the garden, but certainly not in small pots. But this time, when you're pretty sure you're not gonna get any more blooms, I would recommend that you take them out of the six inch pot and put them in a larger pot. And I think I have a set of pots I'm gonna demonstrate how to do that. And well, for my purpose, I don't need too many of them in pots. So I'll just demonstrate two and the remainder, I'll demonstrate how we plant those in the beds. I'm moving up from a six inch to an eight inch pot. You could also use a 10 inch pot, but I'm using what I have on hand, which is an eight inch pot. Actually, amaryllis bulbs seem to grow larger when the roots are snug in the pot. So these eight inch pots should be good for another year or so. And as usual, for drainage, just a little bit of gravel in the bottom of the pot. The potting soil we're using is very porous, high in organic matter, and I'm not left-handed, so I don't know why I'm using left hand. Just place sufficient in the bottom, I think I got carried away there, because the whole idea is to give the, I'm just teasing out some of the stones that may be in the bottom, yes, you can see them there, but I don't want to disturb the roots too much at all collateral damage and the implant in them and at this point the leaves are all floppy it would have been nice to save them but amaryllis grows so quickly and once they're broken once the midriff is broken you have interrupted the flow of sap from the leaves the photosynthesis photosynthate so this one is broken so I'm just gonna clip that out of the way this one also what I'll do afterwards is probably support these because they're really they just gently bent there really is no breakage there and you notice I sanitize the cutting tool with isopropyl alcohol because I was cutting through the leaves so Simply topping up, making sure at least a third of the bulb, the head of the bulb remains above the level of the soil. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to give each eight inch pot one tablespoon of this slow release osmocote. I'm not 
I'm not promoting the brand, but this is 5912 and it gives six months. Six months. So within six a uh, six months period, this should supply all the nutrients that this pot needs. And I'm just trying to stir it in, in the top inch or two so that it doesn't splash or we don't lose any of the nutrients to the air. So this pot and maybe the same. Yeah, I will reuse this steak and very carefully tie them up. So I'm going to do that a little shortly. Let me just finish the other one. Moving on to planting in the beds. And wow, you can see that these root balls are just as compacted as those that we planted in the pots. Again, same process as with the pots. There are plants already in this bed and I'm staggering them, these new ones. These have their labels. Um, just a little clean up in this one. This little extra scale leaves, but in general, I'm not disturbing it too much. I'm leaving a space of between 14 to 16 inches between each of the plants. The planting holes are more wide than deep. Uh, they're at a depth where I can cover the bulbs to about two thirds. I can cover about two thirds of the bulb, leaving the top third exposed. Same procedure for the others. So. Um, I noticed that there are two fairly good sized suckers on this bulb. So I'm carefully, carefully just prying them off because both that's planting materials to be used elsewhere. So here we go. Here are the plants after three weeks and both sets are looking good. There was no transplant shock. They are firm, sturdy, standing firmly upright. There is every indication that they will continue to grow vigorously so that within the next five months or so, the bulbs would have recovered and have, would have put on sufficient additional size to give us great blooms when the next blooming cycle comes around towards the end of the year. I've taken you into the Amaryllis Nursery, or miniature Amaryllis Nursery that's nestled under the trunk of this very large ancient uh, avocado tree. And I did that to show you that the next batch of Amaryllises are almost ready for market. These were set in time to bloom for Mother's Day. But really, I also took you to explain that good things could happen when you repot your spent bulbs uh, early enough in the season. This vitatum bulb bloomed nicely during the Christmas period, but by February, no more scapes, so I transplanted it into this bag. But February, as you may know, is close to the natural period when amaryllis would start to break dormancy. And that's what it did within a, about a few weeks of being transplanted in the bag. It started sending out leaves, and now this is made April and already there's a scape, a lovely scape ready to open, I would think in about two weeks. So time your reporting so that you can take advantage of the period in the year when the amaryllis would normally break dormancy. Now, we've come to the end of this video. I we hope you like the content and that you've learned a little bit more about the amaryllis. As I said, we would share what we discovered under our conditions so that those of you who have similar growing conditions that's a, a tropical a relatively cooler tropical location where you can grow your amaryllis year round and program them treat them so that you can bring them into blooming at specific times so if you like the content please give us a thumbs up share it with your friends and if you have not subscribed as yet we're asking you please to do so that way you can get more Amaryllis updates as well as uh, 
videos on a lot of other tropical plants that we grow here in the nursery. Until the next time, I see you in another video. You take care. Bye-bye.